Kai Steffner, from, who's a customer success manager at LeanIX. Um, Kai's going to talk about cloud transformation, how to succeed when transforming your IT, uh, um, IT landscape. He's responsible for making the customer journey of modernize, modernization of their IT infrastructure with LeanIX successful. Uh, great title, Customer Success Manager, Kai, I like that a lot. This presentation offers insights into major transformations of IT landscapes like cloud transformations, global ERP transformations, modernizing monoliths, etc., and shows how architects can help to drive transformation in budget, time, and quality. So uh, a warm virtual welcome from the Open Group to Kai Stetner of LeanIX. Welcome, Kai. And as you, as you join us, I should say, Thank you once again for uh, LeanIX being our, our premier sponsor for this event. Uh, appreciate it. And uh, won't take up any more of your time, Kai, and I'll see you for questions afterwards. And I would like to present you now within the next 15 to 20 minutes um, something about cloud transformation and how we think you can succeed when transforming your IT landscape. If you have any questions, please feel free to um, use the Q&A session or just send me an email. You can find my email on the last slide of my presentation. Okay, so let's get started. Um, I would like to begin with some photos and which shows quite nicely, my opinion, um, yeah, uh, what a huge transformation, transformation can be. And you can see on the left-hand side, the cockpit of um, the Apollo uh, in 1970. And you can see on the right-hand side, the cockpit of the SpaceX um, Dragon version two in 2020. So this is, uh, in my opinion, a nice picture what a transformation can be within 50 years. Um, you could also apply this to software. And you could see on the left hand side some huge um, transformation in ERP systems. Uh, you can see the first version of um, um, the SAP um, software in the console. And you can see on the left hand side in the bottom, like your proper UI of an ERP system. Um, same on the right hand side, you can see like a normal server. And then on the bottom, you can see the cloud. So um, there's a huge transformations going on um, as well in the software industry, but as well in other industries. And, but like 70% of these transformations fail. And why is that? And that's why, because there's like missing preparation when starting the transformation. There's also a lack of monitoring in the phase from ideation to implementation. And um, it, it happens quite often that there's light, there's light, there's late, there's late, there's late identification of constraints and risks during the transformation. Um, at the moment, there are like many transformations going on. So there's a high need to manage uh, these transformations properly. Uh, and here you can see some examples for migrations uh, which are going on at the moment. For example, you want to migrate your um, on-premise world to the cloud. So you want to switch from your own data center to the cloud. As I said regarding ERP systems, you want to roll out global ERP systems. For example, you want to change to the new SAP S4 HANA. Um, you want to modernize your monolithic IT landscape. So you want to switch to a cloud native world to microservices. Um, your organization is changing. So you want to merge business units or you want to carve out business units. Or in, ter in times of COVID, uh, you have to change your entire operating model. So all these transformations are going on and there's a high need to manage these transformations right now. Um, and I would like to show you now on the next slides how X as a tool can be leveraged to plan and execute your cloud transformation. So I focus on the use case of the cloud transformation. Um, just a short overview about LeanX. Um, we are a SaaS company for EA and cloud governance tooling. We were founded in 2012 in Germany. At the moment, we do have like more than 300 global customers. Um, 
approximately 250 employees globally are working uh, for, for Lina X. We do have a 120 million um, funding, um, for example, by Goldman Sachs. Um, Gartner um, reviewed us as a visionary, and we have a really good rating in the Gartner Peer Insights. And what's really important to us is the usability. So we try to build our software that's really intuitive. And we grew like every year now by 100%. Okay. Um, let me explain to you why we think you need like a proper EA tool to manage your complexity. Um, due to transformation, especially cloud transformation, complexity is really is rising. Is rising sorry. And um, this, uh, um, this um, increased complexity and this increased um, required speed cannot be handled by Excel, Visio, or other modeling tools anymore. So you do have more processes, more applications, more technologies and companies. And there's a need for like uh, a DA tool with a transparent overview of your whole IT landscape. And you can see here on the right hand side, um, our application landscape showing your whole IT infrastructure with a view on the life cycle of your applications. So is it like in plan, is it end of life? Um, large enterprises are already using uh, Lina X as for example, Adidas or Bosch, or even high tech company as Dropbox or Lesson are using Lina X. And they're using it for yeah, for a fast and intuitive analysis of your applications with regards to your business context and to leverage easy and fast decision taking. So you don't need to like have like long plans, but you want to have like fast data driven decisions based on your um, EA infrastructure. <clears throat> um, Lina X is also for us, it's like the GitHub for IT roadmap planning. As you know, GitHub is like um, one of the leading software uh, versioning ap um, applications. And we think you can compare your as is um, architecture to the main branch of GitHub, for example. And with Linux, it's possible to also model and simulate plans of your existing active architecture. So, for example, you could have the plan to migrate finance systems to the cloud. Um, which would be, yeah, uh, like in the future, a different architecture. But it could be also scenarios from the plan. So you want to migrate finance systems to the cloud, but there could be the alternative that you, for example, um, buy um, the HR system Workday, or you just do it on your own. So it's like a make or build decision. And um, all these plans and the scenarios would have some impact on your current architecture. So you would, there's a need to model the impacts on this architecture. And there's a need, if you execute the plan or the um, alternate scenarios one or two, to execute these impacts. And this is possible using Linux. So you can model and simulate and plan the scenarios. But then after executing um, these plans or these scenarios, you can, uh, like in GitHub, you can merge some, you can merge the scenarios to the main branch. It's also possible to, lose, uh, to use workflows as a Jira to trigger the execution of the impacts. So it's possible that you can use some external workflow to trigger the execution and yeah, to trigger the merge to the main branch. <clears throat> Sum this up, it's Linux using it's like GitHub and some sort of time machine. So you, with time machine, I mean, you have your as is, as you can see here, like you have your business capabilities and marketing, including Salesforce, your own CRM, finance with S4HANA, SAP R3, and some HR system, but you can go and then you can go back and forth in the future and in the past. And you could say now, for example, this is the as is, but in Q4 2020, this as is will change. So um, depending on the, your scenarios, you can, for example, have now Salesforce marketing, you can have like another billing application within finance, but you can have a workday or HR system in the HR business capability. Okay. 
Um, getting back to the use case of cloud transformation. Um, as you know, cloud transformation is happening. So um, it doesn't depend on the hyperscalers, um, AWS, Azure, GCP. Um, the migration to the cloud is happening. And um, yeah, and you have to manage the cloud migration, but you also have to manage after the migration, the governance of your cloud components. And if we talk about the cloud migration, there are, um, it's called the six R's, so six strategies of how to model your cloud migration. Um, can I put this here. And the six R would be it's on rehosting. So you just lift and shift. So you just um, yeah, take your on premise world and shift the infrastructure to the cloud. You can re platform as you lift your on premise. You, tinker a little bit so you change for example the infrastructure and then you shift it to the cloud you just repurchase so you move it to some you move your on-premise world to some SaaS solution and refactoring and this is yeah the, the best way for a cloud native uh, transformation so you rewrite your um, application code that is compatible for microservices or you can just retire your application or you retain so you do nothing so these are like the main um, migration strategies from on-premise to cloud <clears throat> and after you've migrated to the cloud you have to govern your cloud and if you want to govern your cloud um, we have experienced these clusters um, which our customers discover at the moment so or complain about um, they do have like a missing visibility. For example, there are like, like hundreds of AWS accounts discovered that they didn't know about. Or they do have some uncontrolled cost or risk. For example, they're using like some VMs um, or they bought some VMs, yeah, which they're not in use. So they have, for example, like 25K every month, um, which they shouldn't have to pay. Or they have slow response times because they just don't know the owner of the cloud account. So for example, there's like a ticket and they have to fix an issue. And it's, it took them like five days to find the responsible for the specific microservice or the cloud account. And I wanna show you now how you can use Linux um, for your end-to-end -end cloud transformation and your governance. So you can start to assess your cloud readiness you can then plan, execute your migration. And then after migration, you can establish your cloud governance. Now I wanna jump now in every of these eight bullets uh, in the following. <clears throat> okay, so let's start with, um, let's start in the Linux Enterprise Architecture Suite and uh, how you can prepare your migration. So first of all, you should build your inventory and collect your data, for example, through surveys. So you could uh, conduct a survey for each of your applications and then get your application owner, get the business criticality and get the migration strategy. And you can see it here. Um, I, um, I included in the survey um, the business owner, the business criticality and the migration strategy. And you can do this for all of your application infrastructure within Linux. <clears throat> Second step would be to analyze migration strategy by application. And after the survey, you can see here now, uh, we do have some nice reporting where you can um, see the migration strategy of every application grouped by business um, capabilities, which you can see here. And then in the third step, you could also model your impacts, um, as I told you beforehand. So you can say, um, you can, for example, for the migration strategy in rehosting, we do have the application LS Law Plus. We want to rehost them to Azure. And we've, if we do this, it would impact our infrastructure because we wouldn't need uh, the, um, the um, HP application hosting anymore, but we would need Azure VM and Azure Function if we want to migrate them to the cloud. So we can model the, or simulate the impact um, 
to migrate some comp some on-premise components to the cloud. <clears throat> and we can do this yeah, for every application. So we can model for every fact sheet application the impacts um, of a possible uh, migration or transformation. Um, now we want to plan and execute our migration. So we want to see the dependencies to other projects and epics. And then we could use our transformation roadmap. So we could see, um, yeah, depending on the initiatives, on the project phases, how are they dependent on, on each other, how are they aligned, and we can group them by business capability and objectives. And you can see here the different work packages of our transformation roadmap. <clears throat> Next step would be you can now project or simulate the future state of your app landscape. So you can select a possible scenario or transformation plan, for example, here scenario B, cloud transformation, and then you can jump to a, uh, to a specific timestamp. For example, here it's June 21, and you could see the changes in the heat map. But you could also jump, for example, now to November 21 or 22, or you could go back to the past. And then you would see nicely the changes of your heat map um, based on a specific transformation plan or scenario. <clears throat> okay, now it's step six. We have migrated to the cloud. And now we want to see, yeah, you want to see, you want to govern the cloud. So you want to have some KPIs for the cloud. We could use our cloud native suite. We could get some nice KPIs, um, yeah, on, on our use on a managed cloud infrastructure. So you could see um, the ratio of uh, used hyperscalers, like the ratio of um, AWS, GCP, Azure. We could use um, our, we could see our use cloud components based on the business context, as we can see here, security storage. We could see um, our cloud spend over time. And we could also get warnings, for example, security warnings by criticality or, or availability warnings by criticality. And then, so this is like our main dashboard. We could also jump into the details. So for example, we could jump into the um, AWS Lambda function and then get details on instance level, technology lifecycle, tax, um, hosted region, your business context, some classification or um, violations um, yeah, um, of this used IT component. Um, so you can have both like a, some sort of management dashboard, but also jump into the details of every cloud component. Um, and then the last step would be to mitigate these issues in your architecture. Uh, so you can have you can have a connection from a technical view of your cloud to the business view of your applications. In that case, I'm showing the application Gainsight. Gainsight is um, using some um, AWS Lambda function, so some infrastructure as a service component. And you can see here by clicking on this um, icon, this is end of life. So there's a technology risk, which was identified based on automatically, based on Cloud Native Suite. And now we should yeah, try to set up some mitigation because otherwise the usage and of the application gain side is at risk because we're using some Lambda function, which is still using Node.js, which isn't deprecated. <clears throat> okay, to sum this up, um, we think that a successful transformation requires pragmatic planning and automatic tracking. So, First step is you need a transparency on your as is. So it's, you need a, yeah, it's really essential to start a transformation. You need transparency of your as is infrastructure. You should only model what brings you added value. So don't model too much, just model just enough to take good decisions. Um, you also should apply aggregations and simplifications. So if you want to keep an overview about your use cloud providers, you have tons of details, but you should aggregate them in, for example, as I shown to you, the dashboard to, to apply them and get a clear overview of yeah, what is needed to, to keep control of your cloud infrastructure. And you should focus on automation. 
So use integrations, use automation to track your, your technology, but also um, the impacts of your technology on your business, on your coast, on your security. <clears throat> Hopefully you're still around for, uh, for a quick question. We're, we're sort of out of time, but... Um, yes, I am. Hi. <laughs> I, can, I can hear you, but I can't see you. Okay, that's good. That's a good start. Um, so a, a question came in in talking about trans, uh, transitioning to the cloud, um, uh, the, the process of transitioning. And I know you had some slides that showed some steps, but uh, for me, the, the, the key part of the question is that how, how have you seen um, the process that, that with your customers take? How have you, um, how do they go about deciding what goes in the cloud and what doesn't? Um, Normally, normally they um, they first of all they um, they try to assess um, their their components. So they they try to they set up a migration strategy. So as I said, like the six Rs. So they set as they um, set up a migration strategy. They assess for some using surveys the technical fit and the business fit of the applications. So. First, they want to assess like um, whether or not they want to invest in the application or not. If they want to invest in the cloud, they set up like a migration strategy. If it's like a long-term application, um, they want to like apply the migration strategy for, and they uh, VA ask the application owner about the IT components of the of the application, and the application owner says yes, um, this uh, this application could be suited um, to be to get migrated into the cloud or not, and depending on that decision, they can for example just lift and shift. They just just put like. They just shift to the cloud using some infrastructure service, or they do like a total uh, refactoring to the cloud native world. For example, like um, changing the application uh, in, um, and the infrastructure and setting up a microservice um, mm -hmm. infrastructure. So it's really um, depending on the, in my opinion, depending on the assessment of the of the application owner and the anti migration strategy of the company. Understood. Thank you. Well, Kai, we're, we're out of time. Um, I know you've been answering, it looks like you've been answering some questions in yeah, the, in the channel. So if anyone ha else has any questions for Kai, then uh, please do uh, please do go through the channel. In the meantime, um, thank you once again to you personally for your, for your presentation and to uh, Lean IX for being our premier sponsors for this event. Thank you for your support. Thank so, you for your attention. Thank you. Thank you.